WeWork is back in the news as Goldman Sachs has offered the company a line of credit worth $1.75 billion. Now the company's founder and former CEO is under fire on Capitol Hill in October. Senator Tom Cotton tweeted this. Adam Newman ruined WeWork, yet walks away with $1.7 billion while thousands of employees get laid off. Newman is a fraud and a good example of why some people support a socialist like at Bernie Sanders. He ought to be sued and investigated. Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas joins us now. Good morning to you, Senator. Um, you have called for an investigation uh, of this company and of Adam Newman in particular. Um, what, and you've described this as a fraud. What do you think should happen? Well, I certainly hope that WeWork can pull itself together. There's still thousands of jobs on the line, unfortunately, because of Adam Newman's fraud. 2,400 workers just lost their job a couple of weeks ago as we head into the Christmas season. But this is a company that was valued just a year ago at $47 billion. Uh, and because of Adam Newman's fraud and mismanagement, it's now worth less than $5 billion. Okay, I mean, but Senator, I, I want to I be careful here. Um, and I, I, I can appreciate the skepticism, but let me just be careful because there's a difference between mismanagement and fraud. Fraud is an intentional effort to deceive. Um, and that would arguably suggest that you're suggesting that Adam Newman was deceptive and intentionally deceptive in terms of the numbers and the accounting and, and things of that sort, rather than this being either mismanagement or a collective uh, delusion uh, by Wall Street and the, and the banks and others and investors who had applied this $47 billion valuation to it. Speak to that, if you could. Yes. So first, let's look at what happened with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The business press has reported that WeWork submitted a draft prospectus last December, and despite working with skeptical SEC attorneys for eight months, the company's value still went up in smoke in just a month after that document was released in August. Look at some of the misrepresentations, or the fictions, I would say, in that document, that they were assuming a 100% occupancy rate in all of their leased properties, where they were using fake, made-up metrics like contribution margin or community-adjusted EBITDA, whatever that means. Look at some of the, the reporting in the business press on Adam Newman's own behavior. There's credible reports that he traveled with illegal drugs across I'm not international gonna boundaries. I'm not gonna dispute, Senator, I'm not disputing the reports and I'm not defending the company. The only thing I'm suggesting um, is it's one thing to assume a 100% occupancy rate if you're trying to project out what you think may happen. And you may say those are reasonable or you may say those are unreasonable assumptions. That unto itself, at least as I understand the law, is not considered fraud. What's considered fraud would be if the numbers unto themselves, meaning how much they earned, how many um, spaces were, were, were indeed occupied, were in fact untrue. And I have not seen evidence of that yet. I find it hard to believe there's any evidence to suggest a 100% occupancy rate. And I know the SEC had serious concerns about some of their made-up metrics. But also look at Adam Newman's own behavior. There's credible reports in the business press that he traveled with illegal drugs across international boundaries on private aircraft. I hope the SEC is not just investigating Adam Newman's lead at WeWork, but also those kind of reports. If he goes to jail for something like trafficking drugs over international boundaries, it may not be about his work at WeWork, but it's like getting Al Capone on tax fraud. Senator, what do you think, though, of the various banks that were involved in this, that supported this company, that continue to loan money to this company, that allowed it to grow, uh, the investors that uh, poured, also poured money into this company. Do you believe that they were defrauded or do you believe they were part of the fraud? Well, I know that some of them are suing WeWork right now. I'm much more concerned, though, about the workers who are losing their jobs or who may lose their jobs in the future than sophisticated investors. I do think it's time, though, for some of those sophisticated investors to take stock of the kind of super voting structures that enabled Adam Newman to right. hold WeWork hostage and get $1.7 billion in payouts for reducing his company to a smoking rubble. Right. Do you find it unusual, and because I do, that SoftBank, which arguably was their, it wasn't arguably, it was true, they were the biggest investor in the company, and if they had been defrauded, you would have imagined, at least I would have thought, they would have run for the hills and in fact, they were probably the only real buyer who actually continued to commit to the company. What do you think of that? 
Well, I'm not exactly clear why SoftBank kept throwing good money after bad. It may have been because they were so deeply invested in it, they wanted to try to salvage some of their investment. But again, that's really a question between SoftBank's management and their investors, uh, whose money they were investing in WeWork. I, I'm more concerned about the workers at WeWork, as well as potential securities and criminal violations by Adam Newman. Do you plan to call hearings uh, that might include Adam Newman to the Hill? on this issue? I, I think such hearings would be appropriate. I would think that some of the Democrats would like to join those hearings as well. As I've said repeatedly, Adam Newman's actions are a good reason why so many Americans are skepti skeptical about capitalism. If Adam Newman is the future face of American capitalism, then the defenders of capitalism are going to have a much harder case in defending it against socialism.